everybody, and welcome to another Inicer the Modeler HFO. Now, if I were to ask any sci-fi modeler what their top five models would be, no doubt the Falcon would be on many of those lists. And as we all know, there have been various versions of that model released throughout the years, but one of the most interesting ones is one that appeared a couple years ago called the Diagostini Falcon. Now, I invited my friend Josh Melville back to Inicer the Modeler here to talk about the Diagostini because he recently completed one. Hey, Josh, and welcome back. Thank you. Now, many of us know about this model, but for those who might not, can we begin by telling us um, what is a Diagostini thing? Sure. Well, um, Diagostini is, uh, is a European company, and um, they've kind of adopted uh, sort of a, a, the, a, a business model that's used a lot in Asia. Um, you know, in America here, we go to a hobby store, and we might spend anywhere from 30 to a couple hundred dollars uh, to buy a box that contains everything we need to build a model. Well, with something this intricate, where there are literally hundreds and hundreds of pieces, uh, they take a different approach where you subscribe on a monthly basis, and then every month you, um, you receive a box exactly like this one. In fact, this is one. And you open up the box, and inside are, are parts. Oh, I see. Uh-huh. Uh and it comes with instructions and it's very, very uh, nicely produced magazine that has not only the instructions uh, for the parts, but also, you know, this um, factual background about the real Falcon, like uh -huh. how it actually works. And it, it's really actually very, pretty cool. In the D'Agostini case, in, in the Falcon case, rather, it, um, it's 101 issues spread out over approximately 20 months. Mm -hmm. So if you subscribe, and I think it's about $60 a month, it would take you a little over <clears throat> almost two years to collect all the parts necessary to build it. Uh -huh. If you're doing this as kind of a father-son project or you're just a hobbyist, this is not a bad way to go because uh, it makes uh, a cost of you know over $1,200 more affordable. Mm -hmm. Plus, most people don't have time in a given month to build more than you know maybe a few hours a month. But... If you're going a professional route, and this particular one was built for uh, as a museum piece, uh, was a commission job, um, then that's just not going to do. Because as I'm sure all the viewers know, you know, when you start a model, you want to have all your pieces laid out before you, so that you can plan your sub assemblies and what you're going to upgrade. And this model has this particular one has a lot of upgrades in it. Mm -hmm. And so the only way to do it is to buy the entire uh, kit all at once. And uh, at this moment in time, Dagestani does offer the entire kit. You can buy it all at once. But the time that I started this, they did not. Oh. And so I had to go searching for what I call a rescue falcon, meaning someone who already had all the pieces but just decided they didn't want to finish building it. And I just, I just bought it off them and then uh, did my thing. And the uh, parts are made of a uh, plastic material then, like, like most models? Yep. Or, uh -huh. They're made of this, it's made, well, there's an interior frame that's built of some kind of soft white metal, mm -hmm. uh, which has a lot of weight to the model. Um, and uh, the, the model itself is made out of plastic. I'm not sure exactly what kind of plastic. It's not styrene. It's, it's kind of the plastic they make a lot of toys out of. Mm -hmm. And then the upgraded parts that I added are, are, are 3D grown, and those are made out of whatever that uh, magical coconut smelling 3D material that they <laughs> right. use. And you can use uh, regular um, model cement or do you use uh, super glue or? I, I use, uh, my go-to glue is uh, is uh, Zap Gap, the green Zap Gap. Okay, mm -hmm. very good. Basically CA glue. So before we get into the model here and you start showing us, how long then, um, how many hours did you spend on this particular model? Well, I keep a job clock and this, this model Remember, it was it was partially assembled when I got it. So mm -hmm. I bought it as a rescue falcon. The person had already assembled the frame and probably put a good 50 or 60 hours into it before I got to it. I see. Now I had to take a lot of it apart, oh. <laughs> and then a lot of the parts weren't weren't to my standards. Yeah. Uh, so I a, there were some of them were a little crooked, and some of them just were where he used a type of glue that wasn't going to sustain itself over a long period of time. Uh -huh. So I had to disassemble a lot of the model. Mm -hmm. um, I have about a hundred. About 160 hours it took me to complete wow. this. Uh -huh. um, over 50 of those hours were just the interior cockpit, and then up here there's a there's a turret where you can see you know Luke Skywalker sitting at the gun uh -huh. a gun barrel, and uh, so just those two interiors alone with the lighting systems, and the fiber optics that took a little over 50 hours just for those two parts. Yeah. So I'd say you know in general this is about 100 hours of my time to build and paint. So the model comes painted, or does it come, uh, at least let's talk about the surface detailing with regard to the weathering and all this. Does it come with all that stuff already? or? 
Well, as, as, in terms of becoming painted, as you can see from this piece, uh -huh. this is Dagestani says is ready to assemble and no need to paint. Got it. But anyone who's trying to build this, you know, for more professional application, won't be happy with that color, and certainly won't be happy with the look of, of plastic. They're okay. going to want a more finished, more professional-looking build if you're serious about it. So in theory, it comes pre-painted, but in reality, it does not. Okay. So basically, it's really like uh, like you would any model. There's going to be some putting and some things that you're going to have to want to do to make it look more finished then. There's going to be a lot of all of that. And yeah. um, a lot of the major assemblies do not fit together perfectly. Uh, you have to do a lot of... Uh, this, is, this is not for the faint of heart or for a beginning model builder. <laughs> yeah. And I fear that what's happened is a lot of people, when this kit came out, got so excited and bought into it. Yes. And then about six months into this, they realized, oh, my God, this is actually pretty hard. Yeah. yeah. Imagine a lot of dining room tables out in the world right now with half-finished Falcons <laughs> and watches going, when are you getting this thing out of here? All right. <laughs> so for those people out there, um, uh -huh. you can come to me. I will be happy to complete your Falcon for you at a, at a very reasonable price. All right. Very good. And lastly, before we start uh, looking into the model here or looking at the model, um, the surface detail, like, is it? It's not like the Bandai kit where you have to put all the little tubing and all the other plumbing and things together, or, or is it like that? Well, I, I haven't built the Bandai kit, but it is. Almost every individual part on here is a completely different, is a separate part. Oh, it is. Cut from a sprue, uh, uh, prepped, sanded, and all the things you would do. Wow. With the and that's just the parts that come with it. There's uh, the, the fans that are on this are complete upgrades from three different um, uh, manufacturers to, to uh, assemble the parts for it. The fan is one part. The grill is, is another manufacturer. And then the, uh, the turret, the uh, silo, is a mm -hmm. different manufacturer. Um, all the interiors are 3D grown or all upgraded. Um, the biggest upgrade to this particular Falcon is that I wanted and the client wanted uh, for this to be a replica of the Hero Falcon. And so I'll, I'll try to keep this real simple, but there were two Millennium Falcons that were built by ILM. One's called the Hero Falcon, which was about five feet long. And uh -huh. that's the Falcon you see in all the close-ups. Okay. And then they realized that that was just too unwieldy in order for filming purposes for the mm -hmm. Falcon to do those cool acrobatics. So they built what sometimes is referred to as a stunt falcon. Okay. The stunt falcon is 32 inches long. This kit is an exact replica of the stunt falcon. And so this is studio scale. But my client, uh, he wanted uh, for the museum something that really represented the hero falcon. Uh -huh. And so that required a lot of, of manipulation. Because even though you know, at a casual glance, the two Falcons look almost identical, uh -huh. when you get down to the details, they're really, really extremely different. And the biggest difference is in the sidewalls here, where the sidewalls in the Sun Falcon are almost level with the, um, I can actually rotate it a little bit, the sidewalls on the, on the real Falcon are level with, the, with these wings. Uh -huh. But the, the five foot falcon, they're recessed quite a bit and have a lot of extra detail. Uh -huh. So that required cutting up the frame. It required doing a lot of surgery to it in order to wow. uh, give it that kind of appearance. And that took a great deal of time. Well, let's dive into this a little bit. I asked you to if you could highlight a couple of areas that you uh, particularly find um, you know sure. interesting to work on and, and to talk about here. So let's get started. What would you like to talk about first? Well, I, the sidewalls I think are my my biggest uh, my my biggest challenge, and I think I'm the most proud of them. They they came out pretty well. Uh, not all of them are perfect, um, but uh, a lot of them are are significantly better than you would get in the in the in the kit. Mm -hmm. um, also, the the gun turret up here, the fiber optics, and the uh, the ability to see deep down into the turret, mm -hmm. uh, and over here um, in the cockpit. Uh, uh, all the lights are in there, and I put flashing lights and a blinking screen. Mm -hmm. And uh, into the trouble of uh, of putting in figures, the kit does not come with figures. Oh, it doesn't. Uh, no, it does not come okay. with figures. The interiors it comes with are, well, let's just say you're you're not going to be happy with them if you want something that makes you feel good about it. Okay. Uh, some people would. I mean, if I were just this casual hobbyist, what it comes with is fine. But if you really want that wow, that pop factor, then you're going to want to do a lot of upgrades to your interiors. Yeah. Uh, the whole back area here on the Hero Falcon is much different. These uh, fins over here, these uh, vectors are called. These little, um, I can't really, I can't really tilt it down that far. Mm -hmm. But there's all these little vectors and fins. Uh, for some reason, Dagestani got it wrong. They're positioned incorrectly. Mm -hmm. So 
I had I had over 34 more of them 3D grown at, at the proper length and had them placed on properly. That was a lot of work. Uh huh. But yeah, there's uh there's one two three. There's about six or seven or eight separate upgrade sub assemblies that needed to be done in order to achieve this effect. Okay. And the paint job, of course, this is many many layers of many different types of paint to achieve the uh, uh, what's called falcon white. Uh -huh. um, of which nobody knows exactly what that color is, and there's a whole holy grail quest to figure out the exact color of the falcon. Well, having made numerous falcons, I can tell you that there is no one color to the falcon. You yeah. can start with the base color, but after you do all your washes and your streaking, it's going to end up being some type of yellowish, whitish gray. Okay, very good. Now, I know so there's going to... Just choose your favorite off-white and start with that and then build from there. Don't worry about <laughs> trying to get the exact base color because it's right. never going to that way in the end that was going to be my next question because there's no doubt going to be people sitting there ah, i wonder what color he actually started with can you tell us what I color you started with have to tell you, i started with um uh, i've built a number of the uh, other types of falcons uh one of the other falcon i built is the hasbro upgrade falcon which i know you built as well yeah and that's made of polypropylene which regular acrylic paints and model paints won't work on mm -hmm. so um i started with the same thing i used for that and it turned out it was the perfect starting color so i've used it now for all my falcons and it is made by rust-oleum mm -hmm. and it is what's called plastic cemented he it's called plastic uh, adhesion adhesion promoter mm -hmm. and it's about you know Two cans of three dollars each, four dollars each will do more than enough you need to cover a falcon of this size. Uh -huh. It's kind of an off-white with just a hint of gray to it, and you can decan it if you want to, but I didn't. I just rattle canned it right over the top of it uh -huh. in various layers, and then on top of that you put uh, your panel colors, and then on top of that there are several oil washes uh -huh. and then the streaking. Now you've built a number of different falcons. How does this compare in terms of? Uh, at least regard to details and accuracy to the other ones that you've built? Well, there's no doubt that this. Is, if you're going for accuracy, there's no no competition. This is the most accurate Falcon kit ever uh -huh. created legally. <laughs> um, there might be kits out there that are illegal, but yeah. I've never seen them. Um, uh -huh. and, and it's a great starting point if you really want to build a studio scale Falcon. Now, having said that, I'm, I'm a fan of the Hero Falcon, the five foot Falcon. And um, uh, Bandai's, it's Bandai's, the here, is it Bandai? The, uh, the, the um, what do they call it? The um, something grade? Yeah, the perfe the professional grade perfect, or something like perfect that. Perfect grade. Yeah. Uh -huh. That kit looks to me as close as you can get in detail. Uh -huh. The problem is it's only, it's only that big. It's only right. 170 second scale. So it's not going to be studio scale. If yeah. you want studio scale, if you want someone to walk into your room and go, wow, what is that? Where did you get it? There's uh -huh. no other way to go but the Dagestani. So... All right. Um, and this kid, even even with all its difficulties and all its challenges, I'm a fan mm -hmm. of this kid. So, uh, Josh, I noticed that uh, in pictures that you've posted online recently that the model is lit, right? So, does this? Can you talk a little bit about uh, does the model come prep for lighting? Um, you know, what, what's sure. included with regard to that? The, the answer is yes. The model actually comes complete with a whole lighting kit uh, for all areas of the model. And if you're just putting this in your living room, it's going to be fine. Uh, in this case, this model has to survive the harsh lights of a museum. And so that wasn't going to be satisfactory. The lights needed to be extra bright. And as you can see in some of the daytime pictures that I, that I sent you, you can see the interiors quite clearly. Well, you, you won't be able to see it that clearly with the, with the lighting kit that comes uh, with, the, uh, with the Dagestani Falcon. You'll want to do some upgrades. In this case, I had my friend John Day build a special lighting harness, and he also built the back ring of engine lights as well, because mm. uh, we wanted those extra brights so that when you see them in the museum, they're they're over they're overpowering the museum lights, and you, you get the same experience you had that you uh, when you first saw the Falcon take off and zoom into light speed. And wow, look at that bright light of engine! Right. So we wanted to duplicate that. Um, in the, when this is displayed, people are going to be able to get very close up. So I wanted to make sure that all the cockpit lighting and all the turret lighting. Uh, would would um, sustain the scrutiny of someone getting really close with their with their you know 120 millimeter lenses mm -hmm. and things like yeah, that. Yeah, right. So that is an upgrade, but the, what comes with the kit is not horrible. And you use some fiber optics for this project as well. A lot of fiber optics. Uh, the kit doesn't come with any fiber optics. They would just have you use a single bulb to light up some stuff. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, when when you upgrade uh, the cockpits and you go with the 3D grown or photo etched. 
uh, versions of them, they all come with holes cut in them, and that's specifically so you can feed some fiber optics through it. And that's not hard to do. Uh, I do recommend that as an upgrade. It, I think it makes a real big difference in terms of the presentation. Excellent. Can you tell us a little bit about the uh, client that you built this for? Sure. He's asked me not to mention him by name, but um, okay. his pet project is called the Science Fiction and Horror Museum, and it's uh, this will be installed in the uh, in the flagship uh, in the flagship uh, version of it, which will be in Times Square. Mm -hmm. There's a other uh, Science Fiction and Horror Museum that's going to be opening in Dubai, and I imagine he's going to have me make another one uh, for that museum as well. Wow. And if it's successful, then they will be branching out. There'll be one probably in San Diego and uh -huh. probably other parts of the of the world. Just for a second, again, going back to Rescue Falcon. So anybody, again, that has gotten into this project and has kind of stalled on it. Right. And, you know, this this particular one had tons of upgrades and it was it's a fairly expensive piece. But mm -hmm. if you don't require all this like perfect grade stuff, if you just want something that's going to look impressive in your living room with a great paint job and you're sitting there with, you know, 500 pieces and your, your wife's about to throw you out of the house, <laughs> then don't do that. Don't throw it right. out. Um, Contact me. Um, you know, he'll post. Uh, he will post my number on 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 the uh, on the YouTube video. I'll be happy to build it for you. I'll quote you a very reasonable price that will you know not be much more than it would have taken you in terms of time to do this all yourself. Because I I, I hate the idea that the Falcons are going to go into some kind of dumpster. That's just would break my heart. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Same here. All right, Josh. Well, thanks for uh, coming on and talking about this really uh, fantastic model that you've built. And congratulations on completing it because I know it's quite a project. It was quite a project. And now I can get my entire workshop just took over everything. So now I can get back to doing some other things. All right. Very thanks good. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah. Thanks for being on. Take care. Take care.